Hey everybody, welcome to Never Stop Building. My name is Jason, it's very cold outside. And today we're gonna install a winch and some other stuff on my big trailer. So, uh, come along for the ride. I guess I'm a Smitty Built guy. I had a winch on my truck. Uh, it eventually failed because I think I let it get filled with water, so that's my fault, that's not the winch's fault. Built a elevator ramp material lift for this hot tub project, so you can watch a, a whole video series about the hot tub project there. Put it back on my truck, then it was stolen. I've just always enjoyed Smitty Built winches and they've gotten me out of uh, quite a few jams. This is their 17,500 pound model. This is a humongous winch. It, this box weighs so much, I had to put it on my back to get it out here. There's not a whole lot of information on this winch. It's crazy, a lot of people seem to be getting these Harbor Freight winches and they seem fine. I, I got nothing against them. Uh, I've just, when I saw this capacity, which usually you wanna do one and a half times the thing you're pulling. So I suppose if you think about my truck at uh, nine, uh, 8,000 pounds, this is, this is more than enough capacity, but this isn't going on the Dream Machine. This is going on my big gooseneck trailer. It has a winch plate ready to be mounted. This is probably gonna get its first use case where we go out to Colorado and haul a bunch of stuff that I left out there back, specifically a project car. And we'll talk about that later. We're gonna go do a little unboxing action, see what's in this box. I'll talk about the other parts that I have for this install and I'll show you where it's gonna go on the truck. And we're gonna do this the professional correct by the book way to install a heavy duty winch on a trailer. There's a lot of ways to do it. I think this is gonna be the, the cleanest way. So stay tuned and uh, we'll learn stuff together. Instructions. Look at this hook. This is a huge hook. It's as big as my hand. It's like as big as my face. This is way bigger than the hook on my uh, 9,000 pound. It's got a plug-in cable. I guess it can be wireless. Yeah, it's, it has a battery in there. Wireless or wired in and out. I've heard that these things aren't, um, they, the batteries need to be replaced sometimes. I guess that's doable. It's nice that you can plug it in if you run out of batteries uh, when you're out there working on stuff. Battery cable, hardware kit, and the little Smitty Bill dingle dangle. Oh my goodness. Look at the size of this thing. Oh, fair lead. This is probably gonna have to be bolted down Ideally, I'd have a backing plate. We'll see how this ends up getting attached. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to take the box apart around this because this thing is just too big. Look at this thing. This is much bigger than the 9,500 pound winch I used to have on my truck. It's a big winch. It's half inch cable. Steel cable, there's our, our control port, our clutch. Looks like you can engage the wireless mode this way. Got uh, its battery cable pre-wired, so maybe I, maybe I don't need to actually swap these cables out. This is big. This is like a full, about two feet wide. It comes off the table about 10 inches to the top of this. Looks like it's about eight inches deep, and I think this has got a way. It's, I don't know, it's got a way. More than 80 pounds, because this feels heavier than a bag of concrete, and that's the only way I, I can judge weight. Here's where our winch is gonna get mounted. All right. So they have this heavy duty winch plate, and they have this cross member. Now, I don't know, I don't think this cross member is part of the winch mounting strategy. It's not connected here at all. Maybe you mount your fair lead to this. That seems risky. I think we'll mount the fair lead and the winch up on this plate, run the cables down here. Oh, I don't know entirely sure where I want to mount the utility lights. I have quite a few of them. Basically, I want to be able to illuminate reverse and the bed if we're loading something at night. And we have wiring connections right there. Maybe I'll put four across, pointing down. We'll figure that one out. All right, let's look at the, uh, let's go look at the other part of this install. Let me move my straps out of the way. So they were nice enough to include a battery tray and I got the little clips in the hold down. And they also were nice enough to include cables that 
this must be just the cable that, that comes from the trailer power, and we'll test that. Then we'll bring our big heavy-duty cables in from the winch. We'll have our connections in here. So when we want to use our winch, we can plug the connections in. This might be a good location to put a switch for the utility lights. You see how on the trailer, there's the box that has where the battery is going to be. I don't want it plugged in. I don't want to connect it at all during its normal operations. I don't want any parasitic drain. I don't even, I just don't want to connect it. So I got these big, beefy, they're, they're knockoff Anderson power pole connectors and some large battery cable. And we're basically going to build a harness to connect the two wires from this winch. You can plug into this and so you open the box and you can plug it and unplug it. A lot of installs don't mention this on trailers, especially utility or recovery or hauling trailers that have winches or lights or stuff like that that have an ex extra battery. You want to install a isolation diode or battery isolator. So my truck has two batteries in the cab and then there's another large uh, multi-use commercial or deep cycle battery in the trailer. I'm going to have current coming through the electrical system into the trailer hitch and then charge that battery while I'm driving and connected. So when I turn on, when I use the winch or when I use the utility lights that we're gonna install, it's drawn off that battery and it's drawn off the whole trailer electrical system. Now, when I go to start the truck, it's gonna draw power from those two batteries and it's gonna to wanna to draw power from my trailer battery. And I don't want any chance that I short out my trailer wires by pulling power back through that trailer connector. If there was anything like I left my uh, headlights on or I had a short or something that caused the, the front batteries to drain, power can't go back through the trailer system and drain the battery in the trailer. The isolation diode only allows power to go in one direction. So yeah, while the truck is running, I'm charging the battery in the trailer. You know, when I'm using the winch, because the, it's the path of easiest resistance, it's gonna pull current predominantly from that battery in the trailer. When the truck is off, there's not gonna be any parasitic draw back through the trailer harness. Lights in the truck aren't going to train the, the battery for the winch. So this is an important thing to install, this isolation diode. I'm making a template <clears throat> because I don't want to haul this winch up and down to position it right. They give you dimensions in the, in the manual for the holes, so I'm going to make a template, see how it's going to fit with everything else, and then we'll drill our holes. Uh, so this winch is not centered. I think there's actually more on this side and it even says so on the diagram, 168 and 141. Uh, but I want obviously the, to be centered on that plate. So I'm gonna lay this out on the plate center line and get my fair lead lined up. <coughs> Put some tape down and see how, it, see how it fits. Big, big winch. This like barely fits here. We might have to put the fair lead on this thing. I don't know if I like that one bit. I think we're gonna have to put the fair lead here. There's just no room. This winch is gonna take this whole thing. Here are the holes. All right, I checked it and it's gonna work just fine. This is just a little bit down and the cable comes from the bottom. So it's always gonna be in that area and maybe that's what they designed this for, but whatever, it's gonna be perfect. Let's, we got our center now. Let's get this squared up, get our lines in here. I guess a template wasn't really necessary. Eh, maybe it was. I guess we'll go a little back because I want to have a, just a, a smidgen of clearance. Oh, I should check that too. Yeah, there actually is a little bit of space that's needed between that, but the winch kind of comes out like this. Uh, so if this is going to be flush, it needs to be back a little bit. So if I take it back, you know, this quarter of an inch or so, it's gonna be more than enough. Plus 15 minus two, 65. You wanna get your holes right. Oh, that is loud as a mother. Oh my gosh, my ears. Try not to break my wrist. All right, obviously these holes are pretty close to the edge here and I'm not super stoked about it. I'm gonna run with it and see what happens. And if there's a big problem or it bends this, you know, in the future, if I need to reinforce it and add a piece of metal, that's totally doable. But we'll start with uh, something quick and simple. Oh, 
This definitely weighs more than a bag of concrete. Ah! The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get everything mounted up. I like to mount everything before I wire it so that the wires are the right length. I just kind of work from outside to in. So you get everything mounted, bolted down where you want it. Then you run the wires and terminate your connections. And you can loom it up and make it look really neat. While I'm here, before I forget again, cause this is like the fourth video that I've been trying to do this for, the winch is reminding me. Will, this one's for you, winch is for Will. Uh, I got a buddy of mine, he's got a young son, I think he's five years old at the time of uh, recording. Will likes watching these videos and uh, that makes me happy because, you know, we all gotta be kids at heart. And if what I'm doing is making a five-year-old get interested in mechanical stuff, then uh, I think I've done a good job. So Will, I hope you enjoyed this video. Anytime you wanna come around and drive the machines or play with the tools or the winch, you can. So I'll, I hope to see you someday. All right, let's get to it. The winch itself has these square nuts that go in here. Let's get these started and we'll finish it from below with Flimsy as hell though, I mean, oh, let's say we're pulling up a car, piece of equipment, small bulldozer, skid steer. I don't think we're gonna be pulling up stuff that bad, but you know, who never knows. It's gonna be pushing down on this mostly. I guess it's kind of strong in that direction. Bet this is gonna start to bend and fail if I pull up something really heavy or a log or something. I should probably have a gusset or something that this can mount onto that ties this, this, and this all into one rigid body or even something that goes over. That would be amazing. That would be really strong, but I'm not gonna deal with that until something breaks. Why spend the time and, and money uh, until there is a need? This is serious. This is a serious winch. One thing I noticed about this is this says 12.9. I don't know if you can see it here. That's a metric uh, designation. And that's, I think, equivalent to grade eight. Obviously, I'll be corrected. Am I out of all my Loctite? That's pretty nice. Using basically grade eight hardware. You know, it's a Chinese made winch. I'm not, you know, that's where everything is made now. We don't make anything anymore. Most things that are made in the USA are also made from global components, which is main, they, they just assemble it and they import the components. But you know, I'm not knocking it. I'm just, that's where all the expertise is. You can tell like that somebody cared about quality and spec good hardware. If that 12.9 is, I think that's grade eight. It might be grade five and I could just be talking out of my ass. Oh, I just looked it up. I'm even happier now. Class 12.9 is like 180 PSI tensile strength and class eight is 150. So these are even better than class eight. That makes me happy. I was gonna go out, I was gonna be like, oh, the hardware's probably garbage. I'm gonna go to the tractor supply and get grade eight. Glad I checked, now I know. 12.9, that's what it's about. Thanks, uh, thanks Smitty Bill. So we got lock washers and lock tight. This is not coming loose. All right, that's how that's gonna be. These are gonna go down in here. You know, I think I'm just happier having the connection in lo locked up. Wires are gonna go through this hole and then we'll put one of the Anderson connectors on there and tie it into the battery. You gotta have a good ground. Ugh. I have this battery corrosion preventative because this is an electrical connection and I really don't want it to corrode. I'm just gonna be extra sure that it's protected. Cause this one's exposed for some reason. I don't know why they didn't give you a little boot. All right, there's the, uh, there's the wires. All right, we'll get all that zip tied. All right, I'm mocking up how I want the battery to sit. So there's a bat there's battery brackets in the bottom of that tray. I'm gonna have it sit 
sort of upside down when you're looking into it because I can access the terminals instead of that wall being right there. Uh, this is how I'm gonna have my, so there's gonna be these, this big Anderson connector. I think I thought this was gonna be the smaller one. Oh, this is a 350. Yeah, I think I thought I was getting the 175 size, but I ended up with the 350. I'm not gonna have a ton of battery cable. I'm just gonna have enough to clear the handle. That'll just kind of, that'll just kind of lay in the, in the tray to connect the winch when we wanna have the winch and otherwise it's not gonna be connected. So this positive can go underneath the battery hold down. I'm gonna do mechanical and soldered connections. So there, you got mechanical connections and you got electrical connections and they're not always the same. And where I can be thorough with this, I'm going to be. Sometimes you can't get in and do, do all this work because of the tight space and so you got to crimp on a connector. But sometimes you, uh, you have all this space and these are big wires and I just want to make sure that there's no weak links in the system to the best of my ability. When these winches get going, they're gonna be pulling quite a bit of amps. And I don't want any resistance in here causing it to overheat and, and be bad. Now that is a good electrical connection. We got mechanical, electrical, and corrosion protection because this heat shrink has a glue inside, basically like a hot glue. So now it'll be quite difficult for moisture to get in there and start to corrode. Um, so we got a bunch of layers of protection here. So the reason I went in all that detail is because I'm not gonna go over every single one of these. You saw how I did it, the whole process, but I'm gonna try to make every one of the electrical connections on this wiring harness, mechanical, electrical soldering, and then heat shrink protection. And that will prevent any degradation over time. I'm gonna crimp them, solder them, and heat shrink them, and then we'll come back and put them in here. And now it's just a matter of inserting them in the Anderson power pole. In there. That click means that little metal thing went into the tab. Hard to see, but there's a metal catch here. There we go. All right. One finished connector. All right, next thing to mount is gonna be the isolation diode. We're gonna mount this key operated switch. So I had this just laying in my parts bin. So that didn't cost anything, that's great. I figured I'll mount a key switch out here so that you know I can turn the lights on with the key and I don't have to worry about lights going on if I don't want them to go on. And then I don't have a switch floating around inside. That spring is way more powerful than the old one. So this has a little gasket on it. Once you lock it in and tighten these screws on the back, it's not going anywhere. All right, so cargo light switch is installed. And I got a bunch of these inexpensive work lights that I was gonna put on my utility bed and uh, I have extra, so I think we're probably gonna put four here and then I'll aim them so that maybe we have these ones here kind of go down the sides of the trailer and these ones here kind of go a little bit towards down further towards the center. Basically when I turn that key switch, I want, I want the whole trailer kind of illuminated for working at night or whatever. I can work on this without them sliding all around and I have my spacing set and I don't have to worry about it. All right, so that was not super interesting to watch, but I got all four of these um, lights daisy chained together. A lot of heat shrink, a lot of soldering, trying to get everything clean and tight so that it doesn't get all corroded. I wonder how long it's gonna take for these brackets to rust. And let's see them. 
Boom, four lights, four blasts, 2.9 amps. I got a fuse holder here somewhere. Oh, here it is. I'll probably swap this out with a five amper. I don't want these wires to burn out. It'd be nice to have just one of these fuses in line if anything shorts. It took a long time to get those just, just right. I have to come back when it's dark, see how those light up the bed. I put a, I just put a connector on here and, and that'll let me plug in. We gotta add the plug to this thing. Put our battery in there. and run voltage from the pat the power box down to the down inside. Off camera I made up this wiring harness because I had to do a lot of thinking and it would have been horrible to film. So this is the wiring harness for the lights that we just installed. Negative terminal, positive terminal, one of those SEA connectors to do the uh, battery tender. So I can run the battery tender cable into the toolbox. These two leads go to the uh, that switch we installed, inline fuse for the lights, and then the uh, weather pack connector for the... Also off camera, I installed the... Uh, well, I'll just go out there and show you. I whipped up the harness for this uh, battery isolator. So that was what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Me this means when I bring in power from the trailer connection, it will charge the battery in here, but this battery will not go back through the truck. And so this battery won't drain if there's any parasitic draw on the truck. I uh, got our big connection. We got this big cable hooked up here for the winch. Got this other one ready to go. I uh, also got these two wires here that's gonna run up to this box. That box is, the, uh, is where we can tap into the trailer wires and that'll bring power from the 12 volt accessory circuit to charge the battery when the truck is connected. So, and then, you know, we got, we got to run a, we got to kind of zip tie all these lines together and get some loom in here to protect everything. Oh, I, I really want to get this done. It's been so cold when I'm filming this. <sighs> now we can actually reach these wires. See, they make it real easy. This pops out and this pops in just like that. Beautiful. So we got white is ground, red is charge, but in this case, I'm using white as hot, black is ground, because in every other system, black is usually the ground. cold. All right, now we can actually finish up the interior. It's a matter of hooking up the big battery cable leads, the wiring harness I just showed you for the lights, and the charge circuitry. Now between the small space and me in there, there's nothing to see that's interesting. So I'm going to do that because it's just putting things on the studs and tightening bolts, but then I'll bring in and show you how it looks. So we got our big leads here connected to the winch cable. Got our isolation diode wired up. Got the trailer hooked up to the, uh, the plug on the truck here. And I'll try to bring you in here. So this LED is on which means there's enough voltage that it goes past the diode here. And now that's charging this battery while the truck is on. When the truck turns off, it's not gonna backfeed any power. So if there's a short or if there's something parasitic on the truck or if the line gets cut or anything like that, it's not gonna drop the power out. Got our switch wired up. Uh, separate wiring harness for the lights and the charging circuit and the winch. It's all connected on these studs. I'm gonna put a little bit of that um, battery stud protection goo 
on there to keep those from corroding. Uh, let's go take a look at the lights. We got lights. And they're bright. Look at this. I mean, it hurts my eyes to look at them. I think, uh, I think it'll light it up, but we'll come back and check it out at night. Look at that. It's like daylight. You know, you definitely, there's definitely serious shadows, but you could hook, hook up something at night if you needed to. Obviously, having light coming from the back would be helpful, but you know, I think this is good for, for what I'm trying to do. Oh, see, my old one had a magnet. That was, I like that. Wireless mode, out. Oh, I gotta put it in wireless mode here. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Wow, this is so smooth. Gosh, my old one was so much harder to pull this out. I wonder, maybe the grease, I mean, it's freezing. And last time, I guess the grease got real hard, whereas this just comes out free spools like all day long. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, this is great. That's pretty good. That's pretty clean. All right, so we got the winch installed, tested, hooked up nice and clean, the battery charging system integrated and working, and our utility lights mounted and controllable so we can light up the bed. So that was a successful install. Next time, if you're following the channel, next time you'll probably be seeing this rig is when we're going out to Colorado to haul back all my other stuff that I left in a shipping container there. So I uh, hope you'll join us on that trip. I hope you found some of this information valuable. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.